Green tea is the other one that singers often will come in with. So with green tea, one of the challenges is that it has been shown to be an anti-cancer beneficiary. It's also been shown in very high um, concentration to cause liver disease. So you wanna really review any of these with your primary care physician, somebody who deals in herbs at um, an herbologist, uh, also a, an alternative medicine specialist, may be very beneficial when you're looking at mixing um, some of these ingredients together because they often do have very beneficial qualities, but then you take away and you have health issues that may counter be counterbalancing to some of these things. With green tea in particular, we know that if you heat it up too much, you lose some of the properties that are cancer beneficial. Also, if you combine that green tea with lemon at a heated um, temperature, it takes away some of the cancer um, protective qualities that come with that green tea. So you do need to be very careful when you're creating these chemistry experiments in your kitchen as to what type of tea you're using, the temperatures you're heating it to, the elements you're combining it with. All right, so that sort of covers some of our basic teas. If there are teas that you have specific questions about, please feel free to email those to me and I'll try my best to answer them um, as we go through. Honey is the next thing that people often ask me about. Is one type of honey better than the other? Does drinking honey or eating honey um, make a difference as far as um, minimizing coughing as far as minimizing injury. What we know is tea or honey in particular has been shown in the wound healing literature to help with mucosal lining. So when you mix it with things, it may indeed help with some of the mucosal wound healing. That does not ever again get to the vocal folds. People will rub honey on their neck too. We don't know that it has an absorption factor um, through the skin and certainly not all the way to the level of the vocal folds. That holds true for anything else that you rub on your neck. So when you are rubbing things on your neck, we are not getting a dermal effect all the way directly through the vocal folds themselves. With that said, we know that transdermal patches deliver medications through the skin barrier. We know that it can, uh, for pain specifically, so we have pain patches, um, so we have hormone patches. People ask me why then if we rub things on our neck does it not go directly to the vocal folds? It doesn't have that direct absorption all the way through the cartilages and the muscles to the vocal folds, but what we don't know is whether you get some sort of systemic impact from rubbing things in the laryngeal area. It hasn't been well controlled at, that at this time to be able to understand these studies. So we do have to look at whether this is something down the road that may be beneficial for singers. Um, wrapping your, your uh, neck in a wool scarf, again, Will it keep this area slightly warm? Absolutely. Do we know that if you rub certain ointments on your neck before you wrap your neck in a scarf, whether that's going to absorb? We don't actually have quantitative data on that, but certainly something interesting, likely not going to hurt you. So if it makes you feel good, go ahead and do it. But we don't have information as to whether that will actually be beneficial for the singer. Um, Honey is one of those few things that can have a shelf life of nearly forever and does not have to be refrigerated and it doesn't go bad. So there are certain properties of honey that we do believe have wound healing properties. Uh, also, if you cut yourself, we know that that will help improve the wound. Uh, thinking of other ointments that you can potentially rub on things for healing, uh, aloe comes to mind. So. Aloe is used for burns. And uh, certainly we hope you don't have any burns in your laryngeal area, but people also ingest aloe. So they will use aloe as a tea. Um, they will drink aloe for reflux, which is an interesting concept. 
Aloe in and of itself is actually a diuretic, so you do wanna be careful if you're drinking aloe, you don't do it just before you go on stage. You wanna make sure you test this out ahead of time. But what we do know is aloe will heal burns. So the question is then, will it heal burns associated with acid reflux? And at this juncture, we don't have definitive quantitative evidence one way or the other um, for aloe. So again, something to consider, something to talk about with your practitioner as to whether it would be good or not good for you. Finally, we think about some of our throat lozenges. Um, one of the biggest things I think we want to just be sure of with throat lozenges is that you're using things that are non-mentholated and that do not have um, that vapor action because that has a tendency similar to peppermint to heighten reflux as well as give you the false sensation of numbing in the throat and oftentimes people use throat lozenges to keep their throat moist or they'll use them when they have a very sore throat and you want to make sure that you are not masking a problem. Um, I personally like Ricola's, Grethius Pastilles, Thayer's, Slippery Elm. Those are ones that don't have a lot of additives. Um, you may have your personal favorite. I'm not opposed to those, but certainly um, some of these out there have a lot of additives, a lot of menthol, a lot of eucalyptus, and we really want to avoid those as much as possible. We come back to now all of those things that sometimes you mix together. So one of my favorite things to do is look on my Facebook page and see what some of my singers are posting as things that they try or things that they do. So they will boil water, add half a cup of cognac, add some ginger root in there. They put a lemon slice next to their bed and take their socks off to suck the toxins out. In no way am I saying that that can't work. I'm just saying we don't have definitive evidence right now that it does. Um, some of the onion cutting, going back to that, because I found that quite fascinating. It actually goes back to Chinese traditions when all of the toxins are heavy, so they go to your feet. So this actually stems from Chinese medicine and the belief that onion will take that away. So that's actually where that comes from. We do see a lot of uh, non-Western medicine that talks about grounding yourself being um, barefoot in the grass and things like that. And whether that pulls the toxins to the ground or not, we don't know. However, we see this in our singers. We see singers who put their feet up in the air and lay with scarves around their neck. So I would just say, be smart about the things that you do. Ensure that the decisions you're making for your voice are smart and that the potions and lotions and teas and herbal supplements that you drink are not going to harm the voice as they become systemic because that becomes most important for my singers. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, segment for Witches, Brews and Chews for this month's vocal wellness chat. And I will see you next month when we'll talk a little bit about gluttony and overeating coming into the holidays and how that may affect reflux. You can check out more information at nats.org. And if you have questions, please feel free to email me. Thanks and have a great day.